Hi, my name's Simon Owen. I'm a digital factory product manager in GSK, and I'm going to talk to you about agile change and digital transformation that we've gone through over the last couple of years. So my role, I've been at GSK for 15 years now in a mixture of business roles and tech roles. And uh, over the last two to three years, it's really been focused on digital transformation. And that's been looking at how our factories operate and how we can use technology to make them run better and help people do their jobs in a better way. And the last couple of years has really been around how we empower and build digital transformation using a suite of Microsoft tools. I'm going to tell you about how we've become superheroes and changed the world by doing this. So I'm going to talk to you about how we've built a community across GSK. And we started with only eight people, and we're now at more than 2,700. We've just broken 2,900, and we're continuing to grow. Now, these people are spread all over the world, from, and we started just in the one location, and now we're spread across 61 countries. And the people drive in their own digital transformation. There are only eight of us to start with. And, and now we've got 3,000 people using these tools, changing the way they work, changing the way they act, changing the way they solve problems. And in terms of number of solutions, well, we started from zero and now there are loads. So we're, we're digitally transforming all sorts of processes and people are driving that change themselves. Now, as part of that change, we've created this internal network, this community of people who are helping each other. But also we've broadened our external network and we've got links into other industries, into other companies, and also into link, links into Microsoft as well. So our strategic partnership has grown too. And this story really is about the cultural change around these tools and how these people have grown and developed. And we've now shown that we've got a, a culture of learning, a culture of experimentation, a culture of collaboration and sharing, and a culture of personal growth, and it's really changed how we've worked. And I'd love to claim that I've got the brain of size of a planet and all this was planned from the start, but, but the reason that we're talking about Agile is that wasn't the case. It all started with a hypothesis and it grew from there and it continues to grow. So where did it start? What's the context behind it? So I mentioned some of these Microsoft tools, and these are tools that allow people to create mobile and desktop apps very simpler, simply. It allows them to automate their own business processes, and it allows them to visualize and analyze and get different insights from data. Now, at the same time as a company, we were going through this agile transformation, and we were looking to see how we could experiment, how we could create value, and then we could pivot. We could either scale very quickly, or we could change direction, or in some cases, we would just stop. And the third part was really around getting inspiration from how other companies work in this way already. So Spotify was a key one and how they give their staff 10% of their time to, to do that innovation, to be inspired, to be excited. And they self-organize around ideas. They come up with a solution that they think will work well in the product that people would value. And if they, they come together and they, they share it, they keep it above the radar rather than happening underneath. And they critique it, they, they offer feedback, and some things get killed and some things get developed. And the hypothesis was really around how we could bring those things together and develop our capabilities in a different way. But in the whole spirit of Agile, that hypothesis grew as well. So over time, we realized that actually it was driving cultural change too. And this is the global context. So we're, we're moving from a world where, where we experience some silos. So the business customer would come with the idea, they would talk to the tech organization. The tech organization would either develop something or they would source something. And then sometime later, they would develop something, uh, they would deploy something which delivered the value that the customer was looking for. And depending on the time frame across that, hopefully it was the thing that they still needed and not just the thing that they, they mentioned when they first asked for the opportunity. 
Now, these tools, they've, they've allowed these silos to start breaking down and working closer together and building that linkage between business and tech. And really tech being the enabler to help the business develop their own solutions so we can deliver things quicker and we can deliver things cheaper. And this is a trend that, that's continuing. So this is outside of GSK as well. This whole concept of a citizen developer starts to blur the lines between business and tech and allows us to deliver value on a much broader scale than we might have done in the past with tech as an enabler and trying to put those safety rails in place to, to help people do the right thing in a safe way too. And these superheroes are the way that we're doing it. So how did I do it? How did it start? So a very small hypothesis, a very small experiment. So I, I recognised that there are a variety of people I could get involved. So I identified eight people from across different business functions in the location that I was working. And I just put in a meeting, one hour per week. And what we would use those meetings for is to come together, share what we'd learned, share the things that we'd created, help each other solve problems, and then communicate and celebrate our successes. So it started off with uh, all eyes being on me as being the provider of the answers, but, but I didn't know any better than anybody else. So I was on my own journey of growth and, and development too. And I, I fulfilled that role of a servant leader, really, trying to unblock those issues or connecting people together or providing things like licensing, which would help them deliver more or learn quicker or develop value. And these people were, were people who do real jobs. They, they knew their data, they knew their processes, they knew where the problems were that they wanted to fix. And these were the tools and the, the mechanism that we worked together to try and break those things down and help them deliver their own value. And because it was maybe a lot less structured than a formal training course or how we might have learnt in the past, it felt a lot more energetic, a lot more freeing, and we had a lot of fun along the way doing it. So over the, the next few slides, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through the story over those two years. And you'll see the, the slides are the same format each time. So you, you'll see the members grow, you'll see the things that, that were delivered, the outcomes at the bottom, and then some images that uh, kind of bring some of that to life. And what I'll do, I'll bring out some of the successes, but really I'll try and focus on the things that didn't go so well. The things that, that maybe we didn't predict or we didn't do at the ideal time um, and, and show you how we pivoted and, and adjusted our approach as we went. So we built uh, ourselves and we, we moved from that hierarchy position to a more collaborative team. We went from a position of no knowledge to very quickly understanding that we could build solutions and deliver value. But that that was uncomfortable. It was it was unusual how we were working. So there was a whole whole feeling around the group um, of uncertainty on what we were doing. Were we doing the right thing? And we moved from that to a slightly less position <laughs> of, of uncertainty, really. It was still there. there we, were, we were feeling our way. We were kind of testing the water and then uh, reacting to that and building where we felt we should. And it grew. So outside of those initial eight people, we started sharing things on an internal um, social media platform and other people would join us. They were also in interested in learning the tools and starting their own development journey and unlocking value too. So the next quarter continued to grow and that team, although we'd been largely under the radar whilst feeling, feeling our way and learning our skills, that it, it became visible. So to some senior leaders at the same location, they recognised what we were doing. They, they celebrated what we were doing and that we had this capability that, that we didn't have before. And we built it in this exciting way much quicker than we might have done before. There was uh, started to be some tension, so the, it was exciting. It was a different way of working. We we were start, starting to invest more and more time in doing it, so that caused a bit of tension as well. So talking um, talking to people's managers who suddenly might have been not delivering the things that they were originally planned to do, that started to become a, a topic of conversation and and really recognizing that these weren't just capabilities for the people. 
these were capabilities that they could use across those teams and work in a different way at a, at a team level and then up at a site level as well. So what what those skills and those people and that their energy were allowed us to do was to then focus on some of the big opportunities um, that, that were there for the site. So using digital data and analytics in a really proactive way to try and solve problems. And it became a thing. So it, it got recognized as a group of people who had these capabilities. And still it grew. So those solutions that people were creating, they were able to be scaled. They were either individual solutions that scaled or they could be redeployed with very minimal effort. So some of that value that was unlocked, they started to become global solutions and delivering global value in, in the same way in different locations. And we started to recognize that maybe we didn't have enough structure around our thinking. So how are these things going to be supported? How how should we be evaluating the, the um, kind of data privacy aspects or the security aspects? How should the platform be set up? So we started to plant seeds and, and think about how that might be developed too. And because of the value that these tools and these people started to unlock, we started to get higher and higher visibility. So some of the exec members, the senior leaders of the organization recognized or, or saw some of the tools that were being created and sponsored them for, to be either supported or funded or scaled and redeployed elsewhere. And this visibility extended outside of GSK as well. So as well as a, a wider network internally, there's a, there's a whole community of people who also use these tools and are passionate about these tools outside. So we started to get contacts in different organizations, in different industries, and also out into the Microsoft engineering teams who created these tools. Still it grew. So that model that we started with, just a, an hour investment each week, other people started to test that model around the the, the um, around the, the company. So we had similar groups working in Pakistan, in India, in Australia, in the US, in France, all over the place. So that, that visibility continued to grow. So uh, even a, a more senior level, our pharma president started to sponsor some of these events and we had the opportunity to, to talk to him and, and show what we were doing. And the groups, that integration between tech and business and, and me being on the cusp of that, on the, the boundary of that, started to work closer with our core tech team to put in the right foundations across the platform, understand what we needed to put in place there to make sure that it was a solid foundation we could start to build on truly. And as part of that external piece, I, I was able to, to present at the Microsoft Business Application Summit and tell them about our story, tell a room of 150 people what we were doing too. So really exciting opportunities. It got bigger still. So at the end of 2019, the Power Rangers group got called out as one of the, the successes by our Chief Digital and Technology um, Officer in, in her end of year town hall. Uh, but we started to see duplication with so many people building things and solving problems. They started to solve the same problem. So we started to think about how that how we could promote these things more, how we could readopt things more. It's a difficult nut to crack. And we're, we're still on that journey, really, to be able to do that effectively. And. The model that we'd proven worked in different locations on how to learn and what to learn and how to get value that got built into some some thoughts around strategic workforce planning. So how across the organization do we build digital data and analytics capability? And this was one of the methods, one of the exciting viral change approaches that got called out in that piece of work too. And my role formalized. So, so one thing I haven't mentioned during that piece um, of the presentation is that I was actually due to exit the company. And through those through those 12 months, that got pushed back a few times. And then because of the the change, the difference, the value, I also benefited from that in in that we wanted to do more of it. We wanted to continue growing. We wanted to change the company. We want to change the world. So still we grew um, 1,600 people at this point in time. 
we partnered with Microsoft as part of that strategic partnering to help them launch internally some new functionality within the platform. So working closely with the senior leaders and the, the engineering teams around those products. As part of the, the WARE site being called, identified as a digital lighthouse by the, the World Economic Forum, one of the distinguishing factors that they called out as part of our assessment was this model on how we were building capability and how we were driving change and delivering value. We started to use re solutions more, so designing them with scalability more in mind or recognising where we could use that model of duplicating and redeploying. But the, the, one of the, the pieces of conflict really was around support. So, so uh, a lot of teams were creating a lot of things. They all needed guidance. So my time got a lot more stretched and I was, I was influencing and, and helping support those teams too. Now, an interesting thing is that back in Q1, I also forecasted what my stretch goal would be around number of people in this community. And uh, I was hoping, I plucked a number out of the air. So I, I thought, oh, well, we're on 1,600 now. 3,000 would be a real stretch target, thinking that we would never get there. But we really nearly are. Uh, and I think by the end of the year, we will be. Once we, we went, so that, that strategic partnership um, got closer and closer. The, the global launch for that functionality used GSK's example and the application that we built and scaled um, inspired the demo that they, they then used for the launch. The team that, that uh, needed to support this on a GSK level started to get formed, started to develop their capability around the tools as well. And the, the processes around those those services that needed to be provided and the, the, the things like guidance on data privacy and, and data security, we started talking about them more and more and promoting them and get that visibility out there because it's such a big topic. Um, in the spirit of trying to develop capability in a different way, we, we continue to grow and we, we started connecting all those makers, understanding what their needs were, understand, trying to connect some of them together to share their learnings and help inspire each other and, and learn better. Um, now, we also uh, had, had some more of that conflict really around understanding whether we were doing the right things from a privacy and a security perspective and starting to partner really closely with those parts of the organization in order to put the right level of governance in place to to practice uh, to balance really innovation with that 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 um, compliance and keeping us safe and in terms of uh, development, we, we also ran a 10-week 10, 10 power platform boot camp to take people who already had a base level of capability and just take them to an extension of that level. And we used the same principles of connecting people from across the organization to do that. And now we're here in Q4. So we're at 2,900 plus members of our, our community. We're nearly at that stretch target. Um, those processes and that guidance and the, the the governance around some of these applications we're still not there so we're we're still working on that and those physical groups that we started off with they're not so evident anymore it's it's more embedded in how we're working so so the need for that week weekly session has faded so as new teams start to adopt the tools that's a model that we can advise on and recommend but over time, it just becomes business as usual. It's just how we work. And as part of those processes, our, our real um, drive at the moment is to get those that knowledge around data and what should we do, what shouldn't we do, how should we collect it, and do our best to partner and then educate the organization in how to do that so we can build these tools then on top of that knowledge. So it's been a really exciting two years, um, huge amounts of change for, for everybody, I think, and what we can do. And I, I tried to pull out the key learnings and the, the critical success factors really from, from these and align them to teamwork, accountability, development and courage. So really, it's all about the people. It's finding the right people. It's encouraging the right people, getting people's input 
it's giving people the time and space to be able to do their best work and focus on the things that that they need to do but connect those into delivering value in their areas as well those initial sessions it's really about helping people learn focus on the capability and then the value comes because you you you've got those people who who have those problems that they can solve themselves and just do it you, you just got to start sometimes and start small think of that hypothesis start to test it and then pivot as you go because it won't be perfect from day one and you'll start to grow and you'll start to find things that you, you in retrospect you should have done before but it's an exciting journey I'd definitely take it so thank you very much